dreamer's dream, your dreams come true. There's no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine. Welcome to season three of Shade Champagne Show. Where we dream, where we live the impossible, grind hard radio. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Tune in. 323-693-3043 Join me with my cast Veronica Esquivel winters Christina Renee Ayakunle Falama Rick and Melissa Wood Michelle Morgan And Ebony and Erica From Tulala One on YouTube We have celebrity guests Music Entertainment Spirituality Sports Fitness Health Wellness Beauty Hot topics Education Entrepreneurship and more. Yeah. Season three mm-hmm. of the Shade Champagne Show. Grind Hard Radio. Good evening, everyone. That was Jackie's Boy with Mad Love. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 43 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. I just got back last night from my 30th birthday celebration, vacation in New Orleans. Every episode is available on iTunes. Search the Sade Champagne Show and you can download them for free. Also, my Sade Champagne YouTube channel is another place where you can listen to the show afterwards. Thanks to everyone for tuning in all around the globe. All the episodes of my show are available at blogtalkradio.com slash grindhard underscore radio. I've also posted a direct link to this episode on my Twitter and Facebook pages, so you can tune in at any time. Thank you to Travis Miller for creating and producing my show's theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing it. Thanks to Kata Mafioso for helping me to create my new radio drop. If this is your first time listening, I'm a professional musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur. I have created, directed, and executive produced almost 300 charitable and inspirational events, including my popular Power Dream Tour. I love mentoring, coaching, authentically being myself, and using my platform to encourage, empower, and bring out the gold in others. Tonight is our special Romance and Love episode with Dr. Jael the Great. She is a professor at Spelman College, life coach, motivational speaker, and published author of How to Keep Your Daughter from Doing What You Wish You Hadn't. She is invited to travel all around the world. As an actress and musical artist, she has worked with some of the greatest talents alive today, including Tyler Perry, Robert Townsend, Kim Fields, Loretta Devine, Jennifer Holliday, Isaac Curie, and Angie Stone. We also have a brand new Mind Right Game Tight segment with castmate Michelle Morgan and new artist Spotlight segment featuring award-winning hip-hop artist, inspirational speaker, dancer, professional model, and entrepreneur Tri-C. My 30th birthday celebration vacation was so fun. It was definitely worth it, and I enjoyed my full seven days. It doesn't feel like it was rushed because I enjoyed every moment, but you know what they say, time flies when you're having fun. I have lots of pictures, and I did a vlog throughout my vacation and all types of wonderful announcements that you can check out on my social media. And I want to thank you so much to my pastor and big bro and big sis, Greg Henry and Becky Henry for inviting me. You guys were so hospitable and just amazing and you helped to make it the best birthday ever. And thank you to all my friends and New Orleans and Slidell who made it amazing and to my home church there, Gospel Revolution Church. It was wonderful being with you all throughout the week and being able to sing for you all and with you all for the Sunday morning service. I'm looking forward to this brand new year. I know that God has amazing things in store. I believe that my life will continue to shine brighter and brighter until light is all that I see. And I'm thankful to be able to share all that I have and all that I am with everyone who comes into contact with me. Me and my artists are always booking new shows and performances. I have tons of things coming up. We love traveling, and if you're looking to bring me, Power of a Dream Tour, or any of our award-winning, critically acclaimed artists, 
mentors, or speakers to your city or event, please email me at sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com. That's sadechampagnemusic at gmail.com for more details. Check out my Facebook page, Sade Champagne, to see my full schedule. Just look under events. Lastly, thank you to everyone who has been watching, sharing, and subscribing to all my new videos. I'm constantly writing new pieces and creating new songs, and I'm going back into the recording studio this month with my music producers, The Quakes. To find out more about my musical journey and how you can be involved, check out GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. That's GoFundMe.com slash Sade Champagne Music. I love tweeting and posting with you all on Facebook and my social media all show long, and I want to know your thoughts. Tweet me at Sade Champagne, Facebook me at Sade Champagne, Instagram I am Sade Champagne, hashtag Sade Champagne Show, or GHR to join in the conversation. Shout out to everyone who tweets me, Facebooks me, Instagrams me, YouTubes me, emails me, (laughs) and more every single week. Your support amazes me. Let's get right into tonight's special episode with our celebrity guest. My dear friend, Dr. Jael the Great, is a professor, life coach, and dynamic motivational speaker who is passionate about spreading the message that you are perfect for your purpose. Jael the Great's passionate quest for excellence has propelled her to great levels of personal success. She honed her craft as a life coach and motivational speaker while working as a facilitator for world-famous motivational legend Les Brown at his How to Become a Millionaire workshop. That opportunity, coupled with her being able to meet Oprah Winfrey and see her in her element and experience her giving spirit, inspired Jael to become all that God has created her to be. As an actress and singer-songwriter, she has worked with some of the greatest talents alive today, including Tyler Perry, Robert Townsend, Kim Fields, Loretta Devine, Jennifer Holliday, Isaac Curie, and Angie Stone. A graduate of the Jackson State University, Jael the Great is a professor at Spelman College. She has been featured as a keynote speaker for conferences, workshops, and schools across the country. Jael is the author of the new book, How to Keep Your Daughter from Doing What You Wish You Hadn't, and the creator of several popular workshop series, including Back to the Basics, A Guide to Dating, and Relationships. Hi, beautiful friend. How are you? I'm amazing. Hi, beautiful friend. How are you? I'm doing so well. I'm excited about this episode. You were one of my favorite guests last season, so I knew I had to bring you back for season three, episode 43, Aww. for much longer this time. Thank you. Yeah. So what have you been up to since our last chat? Please tell us all about your happenings. <laughs> oh, my gosh, so much. Let me see. Um, since the last time I re- I've been um, – uh, you know, really focusing on my acting. Of course, I still do my motivational speaking and my life coaching. I mean, that's always, I, I will always do that. Um, but however, um, you know, as an actor, I, I really love acting. I really love creating. So I've been working on a few films. Um, one of the films that I was cast in is called Love by Chance. I just left South Africa, Johannesburg, because we um it's actually playing over there the um we had a red carpet premiere on the 25th of April and then it was released in South Africa on the 5th of June wait no 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 May 5th it was released May 5th so i you know i've been doing press and publicity for the movie love by chance and i i will actually be in Miami for ABFF um they are screening the movie that Friday night so if you are in Miami and you are participating in ABFF, please come see our movie Love by Chance it's screening Friday night at 8.30 p.m., I believe. And uh, mm-hmm. so I'll be in Miami for that. And it's screening there before it has its U.S. debut. So I'm excited. So I've been working on that, and I'll be actually back Congratulations. in Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. The TV show that I wrote, along with my partner, Nico, we um, wrote a TV show and we shot the pilot episode, so I'll be in L.A. getting it edited and shopped and picked up by a major network. Mm, phenomenal. Congratulations on everything. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. So out of all your talents, what do you enjoy the most and why? I enjoy everything because everything that I'm doing, I'm purpose to do it. Like I'm not doing anything, you know, just to be doing it. My life is very purpose-driven. So everything mm. that God has called me to do, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. And God has given me a lot of talents and gifts 
because he knew I could handle them. He could trust me with them. You know, just like in the Bible mm-hmm. talks about the people with the many, ta- many talents. God knew I was going to serve humanity with all of them. So I'm a servant mm-hmm. with my gifts. You know, my life coaching helps me to, to have a one-on-one personal relationship with people and help them um, become the best version of themselves. And I'm motivational speaking. I'm speaking to groups of people where all of our energy is coming, is coming together and, and people are being changed and their lives are being changed. And, um, that's a blessing. My acting, you know, that's entertainment. People love to be entertained. They need an escape. So they, they'll go watch a movie and maybe just for an hour and a half, you know, kind of forget about what's going on in their life um, and just have mm-hmm. a time to laugh because laughter is medicine and, you know, healing for the soul. And so, um, you know, my book, everything I do, uh, I'm anointed to do it. It serves a great mm-hmm. purpose. So I don't have a favorite. Like I really, really enjoy doing, I was created to do it. Mm-hmm. That's really I love, good. I love them all equally. Like I really do. Mhm. You like that's like asking me which of my children do I love more? More. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> that's a great <laughs> guess, right? <laughs> yes. So you what love them all. They're different, with, different. You know. Exactly. That's very true. That makes a lot of sense. What are some words mm-hmm. of wisdom and advice you would give to people who want to become a professional life coach and mentor like you? Like, that's, that's something mm-hmm. serious when you are dealing with people's lives. You know what I mean? Like, I've, mm-hmm. I've honestly had people, you know, I've, I've had people who have reached out to me, and they have a life coach, and they said they feel like, they said my life coach is good, but I feel like she's doing it for the money. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. people know, people know mm-hmm. when you are doing something because you are called to do it, and you mm-hmm. are passionate about it. And they know when you're doing something, maybe because you can do it. You know what I mean? Because we can, I mean, I can do a lot of things, but it doesn't mean that Mm -hmm. I'm anointed to do them. You know what I'm saying? I can do a lot of stuff, but, you know, Mm -hmm. so people know the difference. So my first thing I would would say, when you're dealing with people's lives, make make sure you are called to do that. Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. when you're called to do that, you're graced to do it, and you will really affect people in a way that they need. They're reaching out to you because they have a need. So first Mm -hmm. thing is make sure that like, you know, this is something that you're called and created to do, number one. And then after that, you, you, you know, you have to really do a lot of research. Like you have to constantly do personal development because you cannot, you don't have. So I Mm -hmm. daily, you know, listen to gurus. I listen to Abraham Hicks. I listen to different pastors and preachers. I listen to different, um, you know, uh, uh, different people who, who are on a positive wavelength who are seeking life like I study Mm -hmm. because I have to Mm -hmm. to have that in me to give it so you have Mm -hmm. to study your craft whether you're acting whether you're life coaching whether you're teaching whatever you're doing you need to make sure that you're perfecting it and really taking that time out and developing you know who you are and your gifts and talents so you can be a blessing Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. And I like what you said, too, about um, knowing if something is what you're called to or not, because we both know in our society nowadays, a lot of us, a lot of people are trying to step into things that are not a part of their personal destiny, and they don't even know if they really want to do it or not, because if you take away, like you said, if you take away the money, if you take away the fame, if you take away whatever, the influence, is it something that you still would be passionate about doing? And for a lot of people, they would have to be yes. honest and say no. So then if the answer is no, then why are you doing that particular thing? It's like you're living someone else's dream as opposed to the custom-made dream and journey that God has created within you. Exactly. So it's mm-hmm. important to seek that out and find that. And a lot of times, you know, we do we do try things in order to find that path, and there's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. that. But right. but but in that, make sure you know that that you're like seeking the the, the purpose. You know what I mean? Because you might start out doing one thing. Like I thought I was going to be an attorney. Like I moved to mm-hmm. Atlanta to go to Emory for law school. That was what I, you know, that was wow. in my mind what I really wanted to do. But God redirected my steps, so I needed to think that to get me to a certain spot. Do you, you know what I mean? <laughs> But, mm-hmm. but, but again, mm-hmm. like you said, it's important, even as you're seeking your journey, you may be working somewhere that, you know, you're like, okay, I don't think this is it, but you try, but that in turn, you will meet somebody who helps lead you to your ultimate destiny. So as long as you're mm-hmm. seeking that purpose, you'll find it. That's very true. And I also like what you said, too, about, you know, in so many words, you're basically saying we have to live from the overflow because we are created to be 
wells and not drains, you know what I mean? And so if we yeah. are allowing ourselves to be constantly filled up and to be encouraged and empowered, then that's going to be able to effort, effortlessly share with other people. Like I'm sure when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to say, oh, my gosh, i got to try so hard to be kind to people today. i got to try so hard to serve <laughs> and give. No, it comes from the overflow of your heart. You can't help but to give yeah. and share and be loving and kind how you are because it's the overflow of what's already taking place in your inner being. Yes. Definitely. That's Mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So what are some of your current professional and personal goals? You know, I think like my current goal right now is to um, get my television show picked up. So I'm putting a lot of um, great positive energy towards that, you know, completing that project. And um, also, um, I have what what I started doing with my book, which has been a blessing because like, you know, I go speak at a lot of schools and a lot of different places. And um, a lot of times, you know, sometimes the uh, parents are, or, or the students come from homes where that they're not able to afford certain things, even something like a mm-hmm. book. So I've been getting sponsors to help me donate books to schools, you know, to young ladies mm-hmm. at different schools, foster mm-hmm. care, their parents may be incarcerated. So, mm-hmm. you know, I have a um, a website specifically for that. It's my, it's jaelthegreat.com and then it's a backslash sponsor. And mm-hmm. people can go and actually donate books to young girls, our future leaders, our future queens in need, you know, who would not, who would mm-hmm. not be able to get the book without your help. And that is very mm-hmm. important to me because my goal is to get books to young ladies all over the globe because it's mm-hmm. needed. And I have parents that, you know, call me or they'll email me and they'll say, Jael, your book has changed the relationship between my husband and my, and my daughter and I, and I thank you. Like, it's been phenomenal. So, you know, mm. people who have that, that, that um, give back spirit and, and they understand the importance of, please go to my website, jaeldegreat.com backslash sponsor and, and help us mm-hmm. get some books to these young ladies. And even if you have an organization, you may like, Sade, you may say, oh, I know an organization mm-hmm. um, in California with some young girls at a camp. I need people to mm-hmm. donate books. You know, we want to donate 10 books to these girls. And, you know, so mm-hmm. it, it's a beautiful, yeah. that, that has been phenomenal. So, mm-hmm. yeah, working on those two things. And, mm-hmm. Okay, definitely. And so everyone, make sure you check that out, com slash sponsor, and that will be one of the best yeah. ways that you can help support what she's doing and help support young women and girls around the world. So who is your favorite yeah. person you've worked with so far? Oh, my gosh. You know what? I have really been blessed to work with some amazing like, – like, honestly, and now I, I, my, this last project, I think because, um, like, we filmed a movie in Atlanta, but they flew the actors in from South Africa – I, I, mm. I had so much fun with them, and I and it was like love at first sight with them. And I think it's because like I've always wanted to go to Africa. I always knew that I would. You know, that's where everybody comes from. We all originate from the motherland. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, just kind of being around them and talking about the culture, and talking about the different things and differences and similarities between Africans and Americans, and just how we think. Mm-hmm. You know, dispelling stereotypes and stuff. I, that for me was like such a beautiful blessing. But I have honestly been blessed on every set to work with some beautiful souls. And I thank God that that will continue to be my path in my acting journey, that I will, you know, um, roles where I'm working with great people and people with beautiful souls and kind hearts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so before we take a song break and get into our romance and relationship portion of the special, remind everyone how they can stay updated with your career and book you for life coaching, speaking, performances, book signings, mentoring, and more. Yes, most definitely. Um, you all can go to my website. It's Everything is Jael the Great, and my name is spelled J-A-E-L. So JaelTheGreat.com is my website, JaelTheGreat.com. My Instagram, you can keep up with me. I try to keep up with the social media thing. I'm not really the best at it, but, you know, it's something we have to do now. <laughs> but my Instagram is at JaelTheGreat. I do try to Snapchat. Um, my Snapchat is the great Jael. Um, Twitter, Jael the Great. So just, yeah, keep, I would love for you guys to keep in contact with me, follow my journey, 
Email me if you need my services. Again, you can go to my website and my email address is on there if you need life coaching, if you need, um, uh, you know, to book me to speak at an event. I, I would love to do a book signing if you have a group of teen girls that you're working with, you know. So y'all hit me up. I love meeting new people and connecting with new people. It's my joy. And she is such a pleasure to work with, one of the most humble um, and kind and fun-loving spirits and very professional. And so I know you all would love working with her. All right, so stay tuned because right after this conversation, we're getting into some juicy relationship discussion and talking about what matters to you. I am Sade Champagne. You're listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio, and I'm here with the amazing Dr. Jael the Great. Our next song of the night is Guapale with Butterfly Kisses. Keep listening to episode 43 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Are you looking for a dynamic musical artist, performer, host, or inspirational speaker for your next event? What about a mentor, vocal instructor, or workshop leader for your school, company, or seminar? Contact Sade Champagne for countless professional services that are sure to fit your particular need. She is an in-demand, award-winning, and critically acclaimed musical artist, performer, inspirational speaker, and entrepreneur who is invited all around the world. She is known for having a powerful voice, turning ideas into action, creating, directing, and executive producing popular charitable and inspirational events, and bringing out the gold in others. Her services are for all ages, backgrounds, and environments. Contact Sade Champagne at Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com. That's Sade Champagne Music at gmail.com to book her for your next event or project. Hi everyone, it's Sade Champagne here, and I hope you have already gotten your tickets to the Walls Group Latitude Tour. I had the pleasure of getting an exclusive behind-the-scenes interview with the Walls Group on their Latitude Tour in Los Angeles, and we were able to have them on our season three premiere of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. This phenomenal tour is absolutely amazing. I have attended many concerts in my life, including Prince's Music ecology tour back in 2004 and the walls group latitude tour is definitely in my top three tours of all time these grammy nominated billboard charting gospel artists are assigned to kirk franklin's full yo soul recordings in association with rca records and releasing their newest studio album this year they have hundreds and thousands of fans around the world with their videos garnering millions of views you can go to thewallsgroup.org slash tour. Once again, that's thewallsgroup.org slash tour to get your tickets to this concert. And also, if you want to book them and bring them to a city or event near you, email book at thewallsgroup.org. That's book at thewallsgroup.org. They're coming to Georgia, St. Louis, Louisiana, Virginia, Texas, Orlando, Miami, South Carolina, Tennessee, Washington, D.C., Michigan, Minnesota, and more. Make sure you go to thewallgroup.org slash tour. They have been Sade Champagne approved. This is Michelle Morgan from the Mind Ray Game Tight segment, and you're listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. I'm here with my friend, multi-threat powerhouse, Dr. Jael the Great. She is a professor, life coach, motivational speaker, actress, published author, and musical. We will be keeping it 100% real, authentic, transparent, and empowering. So, Jael, why is it important to lead with the spiritual and mental instead of the physical and only emotional? Oh my God, that's so important because that's really the core of who you are. Your your physical that 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 changes. That's that's not who you are. You know you you are you are a uh, spirit being having a human experience. So that's really the core of who you are, and nobody can duplicate. You know th- that that's what God gave you. So I think um, a lot of times people leave with the physical, or or they 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 um, they feel like that's who they are, and um, that's what mm-hmm. that's dangerous. That's very dangerous to, mm-hmm. to only feel like that's what you're worth. You know, like like you're not your hair, like the Andy Irie song. You're not your butt. You're not your breast. That's not mm-hmm. who you are. You know what I mean? That's just something God gave you for your husband to enjoy. But you are a 
spirit being. You know, you are a beautiful person. You are um you are you are who you are on the inside. You are what you radiate, you are what you think about. That's how you attract mm-hmm. certain things. So if you are not, you know, leading with that then you're going to attract like the wrong things because you're leading with something mm. that's superficial to mm-hmm. lead with, you know, who you are on the inside, which is kindness. You lead, you lead with, um, with joy, you know, you lead with a great mindset, you lead with being positive. So, Oh mm. girl, that's a great question. Yes. Yeah, very important to lead mm. with who you are on the inside, even though people see the physical first, but mm-hmm. they, they see the physical, but, but, the, the the unseen is more real than the seen because they feel what's on the inside. Mm-hmm. You know, energy is very real. So mm-hmm. I can walk into a room and you can see, you know, you can see me physically and aesthetically, but if my energy is negative, you can feel that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So with and your heart. I'm sure you- yeah, and I'm sure you notice this too with social media nowadays in our reality TV based society. So many women and girls feel pressure to um, be more explicit, more provocative, and you see it through social media where we're spending all this money and all this time on our physical being, and it's like, yeah, that might reel someone in, maybe, and not probably, most likely not the kind of person that you really want to, you know, build yeah. a family with and have children with, but it's not going to keep the person there. And so, what are your thoughts on that? You know, um, and because, like I said, I always feel like. Man, and you know, too, being in the entertainment industry, like, I think it's important for us to be confident and secure in our bodies, to be comfortable with what God has given you. And I'm not saying that we all need to wear dress like, you know, mother maids or anything like that, but knowing, (laughs) you know, that once again, um, we don't have to be so explicit and provocative in order to get that attention that we're craving for and knowing, you know, so I want to have you share your thoughts on that. You know what? That's, that's so true. Like I have a friend, um, he does like a lot of love and relationship. Like he does, a, I forgot the TV show he was on, Black Love, I think. Uh, he's, a, I think, I don't know if Jack is, is a life coach, but anyway, he's like an influencer as far as like um, love and romance and relationship. He's married. But he was even saying, he posted a photo on his Instagram with a girl, you know how like showing her butt, like all you could see was her back. You couldn't see her face. You could see just her huge butt. And he was like, he was like, ladies, when you post this, what do you think men are thinking? And he's trying to educate women and let them know, like, when we see that, all we think about is sex. We're not thinking about wifing you. We're not thinking about, you know, taking you home to meet our mother. And that's the truth and that's the reality. If you lead with that, that's what people are going to be thinking about. And it's not about, like you said, it's not about you dressing like a nun and wearing the nun outfit. It's, it's, it's about, to me, it's about you being a lady and understanding that you're worth so much more than that and not mm-hmm. being defined by that. Like, you don't, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have to be defined by your breasts and your butt. Like you said, that'll, mm-hmm. that's not going to keep somebody. That, that, that is fleeting, temporary attention. That is not something that's long lasting that, you know, that you grow old with somebody. That's not how you attract that. So I just think it's Mm. important for women to understand, no, I do not have to feel pressured by what I see, which is, which is not even real. It's Photoshop. It's bought. Mm -hmm. And that's fine if women want to do that. If you want to do that, that's fine. But I'm saying, Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, Shana, you need to be authentically who you are. So if you are Mm -hmm. authentically a woman who is modest, be her like because if you're trying to change who you are and look a certain way and take pictures a certain way because you see everybody else doing it it's not going to work so you have to Mm -hmm. be authentically who you are you know what I mean like and Mm -hmm. and if you're if you are authentically a lady you know a woman that's more modest and you are attracted to class and you are attracted to sophistication then be her and then you know those are the type of people you'll attract in your life so, mm-hmm. you know, be authentic to who you are, I guess, will be my best advice. Don't try to change mm-hmm. because of what you see on social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that. It's so true because I feel like when we are just only allowing ourselves to lead with sexuality, with the physical, you know, we become a shell of who we really are, you know, because those things can never you know, they can never get to the heart of who the person really is and what they really desire. They think they're desiring a whole bunch of likes and a whole bunch of people to tell them how attractive they right. look. But really, if you were to 
or him, that's that's a you know a child in there that's saying, Hey, I didn't get the love that I needed. I don't know how valuable yes. I am to God. You know, and um, and I think it's important yeah. too um, it, that to, and it, I think it's important too for young women to understand, you know, that modesty is not based on what you wear, but it's a position of your heart. Like it's based upon how you actually feel about yourself and and how you think, and that will determine, you know, all the outside stuff as opposed to just saying yes. if I dress a certain way, you know, that actually makes me modest. It's like no, it's about the position of your heart and you understanding your yes, value in your work. Yeah, All right. that's so true. That's so good. And so what do you say to people who want to try abstinence, but they feel it's impossible because they're used to having sex and they don't know what a relationship is without it? Oh, that's a great question. I can definitely answer that because I was there. I was that girl. So um, for me, when I decided to um, abstain, and uh, I love talking about this journey because it, it helps so many people. So like, when I first decided to abstain, um, I messed up on, uh, along the journey. So it's okay. I want everyone to know that, like, if you've been programmed and you've been having sex for, like, such a long time, and you say, okay, today I want to start, and you mess up, you have to be so gracious with yourself and forgiving and loving with yourself. First of all, number one, you have to be loving with yourself. So um, the the, the and congratulate yourself for the times that you did hold out. And as you continue on that path and you continue on that journey, you continue to learn your boundaries, you continue to learn about that journey, one day you'll, like, you'll be like on a roll and you'll be able to hold out and you'll be able to wait. So I always like to stress that. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, mm. One thing I can tell you, I can tell you how to succeed and I can tell you how to fail. One way you succeed at being abstinent is not putting yourself in a position where it's going to go down. This is everything I learned on my journey. Mm -hmm. So I have to Mm -hmm. learn, like, if I put myself in a position where I can have sex, it it might happen. Point, I'm not, I hadn't, I wasn't strong enough yet. You know what I mean? I was just starting off Mm -hmm. like a baby trying to walk. So number Mm -hmm. one, to help you become successful in your abstinence journey, don't put yourself in positions where you can, um, you know, where, where you will have sex. Another thing mm. is, and what I, this is everything I have to learn. Um, when I was dating men during my abstinence journey, when you're dating somebody who's not on one accord with you, it's difficult mm. to, to hold out. So, mm-hmm. so in your dating process, and you have to be okay with, uh, you know, maybe, you're, maybe, maybe for a period of time you're not dating. You have to be okay with that. Date yourself. Fall in love with yourself. Mm-hmm. Be, it's okay that you're not with a man. Like, you got to be okay with that. Um, mm-hmm. so, and then when you do start, when you feel like you're strong enough to start entertaining uh, a gentleman caller, uh, make sure he's on the same page. And if you believe that God will send you somebody who's on the same page with you, you know what I mean? It's important mm-hmm. to your faith. Yeah. So if you don't, don't say, Oh, I'm never going to meet anybody that's on the same page as me on this journey. You know, speak life about it. Speak what you desire, mm-hmm. speak what you want to attract. And that's what you will. You know what I mean? So, um, mm. you know, focus on what you desire. Don't put yourself in that position. Be gracious with yourself. And, um, you know, try to get around people who are like-minded. You know, try to be around people who are going to encourage you on your journey. And it'll help, mm-hmm. you, um, it'll help you stay focused. Mm-hmm. But you can, mm-hmm. you can do it. You can definitely do it. Yeah, I I agree with that, and I feel like when you have uh, when you have a guy in your life, or there's a guy who is able to hold a woman accountable and who's able to be respectful towards her desires, you know, and, and he leads that on, you know, in her. I think that's like one of the sexiest things ever, you know, where he says it he's really the kind is. of guy who says, you know, he's the kind of guy who says, I know, you know, Jael, that you want to remain abstinent until you're you're married, and I desire that for my life as well. You know, you guys have been hanging out for the night, and you know you both are getting sleepy, and he says, you know what, um, you're going to either have to go to a hotel or, you know, you're going to have to go to a friend's house, but I'm not going to have you think, or I'm going to leave because I respect you too much and I value who you are and where you're headed, you know, and, um, and what the life that I want to create with you. You know what I'm saying? And so I think it's important, yeah. too, as, you know, as women to allow the guy um, to, and even have that discussion with him that you are looking for someone to lead you in that way. You know what I mean? Because a guy who's able to stand yes. up in that way and lead you can also, I feel like, is going to be a very wonderful husband and is able to help 
lead a family as well, and even lead businesses, like just it, and friendships. It, it, I think it goes across the board because it shows that it they're really valuing who you are and what you desire in your heart, and they're going to lead you and love you from that place. You're like, oh, my God, you're not even putting me in, in a predicament. <laughs> um, and to the guys listening, exactly. I'm like, that's a quick way that the woman would actually want to marry you if she sees that you actually value and support who she is, and, and you are literally bringing out who God has called her to be. Yes, and, and and also I don't want women to be in fear of um of making that decision, like afraid that, you know, a guy won't want to be with them. Sweetie, if he doesn't want to be with you because you tell him you're abstinent, he's not the one. Like that is the quickest mm-hmm. way to get rid of the snake. Like it really is, and it's such a freeing <laughs> thing. Like it really mm-hmm. is. That is a way to get rid of any snakes and decoys and distractions. If Even if yeah. you like him, like I, like I taught my daughter, Sometimes you like somebody that's that's not good for you. Sometimes you're attracted mm. to men who are not good for you, even grown women, but you have to love yourself mm-hmm. more and say, you know what, you are fine as I don't know what. You're fine, but I can't do it. <laughs> like, I love myself more. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be really yeah. honest with yourself. So, ladies, it's okay if you've met somebody that's beautiful to you and, oh, my God, he's like just so much to you. But then you tell him, you know, I'm I'm I uh, I'm virtuous and I've made a decision to change my life because insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results and I want different results. If you tell him that mm. and he leaves, girl, that's letting you know all he wants to do is have sex anyway. So mm-hmm. that's that's a good thing. You know what I mean? You may yeah. be a little bit like, Oh man, but it's okay, you'll be okay. You'll be just yeah, fine. you don't want anyone. Yeah, we don't want anyone in our lives who's not supposed to be there and who is not you beneficial don't. to our well-being and our destiny. It's a waste of time. There are too many abortions that have been had. There are too many heartbreaks mm-hmm. that have been had. There are too many, um, you know, abusive relationships that people have entered into because they have entertained people that are not for them. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean. And we can help prevent that with the next generation, with the young ladies that we mentor by, 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 by even, even older, you know, it's not even an age thing, just mm-hmm. being enlightened. Enlightened has no age. But we can enlighten mm-hmm. women and say, listen, darling, you know, if you are trying to live your life a certain way and he's not, set your standards mm-hmm. and know who you are and, and what you're going, willing to accept so you won't waste time. Like, you mm-hmm. don't want to waste time and, you, you know, now you have an STD, with, you know, to, over somebody that's not your husband. It's too much. It's too much. Mm-hmm. Like, seriously, it's too much. So you can eliminate worrying about if I'm pregnant, if I have an STD. You know, abstinence eliminates mm-hmm. all that foolishness. Mm-hmm. It really does. And, yeah. and so you're leading to my next question. You know, let's talk about high expectations versus being shallow. And so for an example, okay. you know, um, we, we know that, um, you know, we would prefer the men to be the provider. We know nowadays in society that women also provide as well, but the man is not, and not only the man being the financial provider, because I know you and I understand that when we say provider, it's like mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, social, you know, socially, relationally as well, not only finances. But, you know, in our society nowadays, a lot of women can be very shallow, and instead of just saying, I want a man, you know, who is working hard towards his dreams and goals, who has, you know, consistency in his job or finances, you know, things I feel like are more reasonable. She's like, wants a guy mm-hmm. who can buy her the fanciest things and, like, all the expensive purses and bags and everything so she can brag and feel good on the gram, you know, or Instagram. And so it's like, right. what do you feel like are the different – what do you think is the difference between high expectations versus being shallow? Yeah, it's it's definitely a difference. I think um, I think it's it's important to um, again like understand understand who you are, and when you come from a place of like you know there's a there's a verse that says to the pure all things are pure. So let me say that. Let me start with that. To the pure all things are pure. Mm-hmm. So, for example, for me, and it depends on where you are in your life, right? Mm-hmm. For me, um, I knew that when I was getting married, I, have, I, am, I am very old school when it comes to marriage. I was mm-hmm. raised with my mom and my, and my dad. My father is a provider. So, mm-hmm. for me, quite naturally, I, look, I was looking for that in a mate. I mm-hmm. don't want to be the man. I want to be the woman. Mm-hmm. So, for me, yeah. and this is just me, it was important for me that I married somebody who was a provider. And what I mean by that is, and this is just me, mm-hmm. I'm not marrying a roommate. I, I have a husband now, so I'm not splitting any rent. I'm not doing that. This is just me now. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not splitting mm-hmm. any rent. I'm not doing that. My husband should be able to take care of everything. If I never, if I never want to work and I want to stay mm-hmm. at home and take care of the home, which is a full-time job, and especially mm-hmm. if you have children, if you are, a, if you are staying at home and you are, a, 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 you know, a, a full-time mom, or, or even if you're just taking care of the home, that's a lot. It's a lot. Right. So I wanted somebody that could provide for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. There's now if you are saying you only want to marry somebody because you want him to buy you Chanel bags and Louis Vuitton, um, I think you're taking it to another level. It's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with him doing that. That's 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 there's nothing wrong with that at all. Right. But if that's right. all you want, then that's when you're crossing that line of it being, you know, shallow and a preference. That's when that line is being crossed. When it's all mm-hmm. about what he can do for you. You should have mm-hmm. certain standards and expectations of a man. A man should mm-hmm. be able to provide for you and take care of you. That's how God created it. He is the head mm-hmm. of the household. Everything mm-hmm. lies on him. You know what I mean? That, that God created him to be a man. He's strong. That's why he's, he's strong, strong mm-hmm. physically. He's a man for a reason. He can handle certain things, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it starts crossing the line when you just want that. Like, you don't want to have to do anything. You just want him to, to do everything. I think that's when you're crossing the line. When you don't love mm-hmm. him, when you're only marrying him because of what he can do, that's when it's crossing the line. That's when it's shallow. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's when it starts getting mm-hmm. like, okay, your heart, your intents are wrong. The, the, mm-hmm. intent, the intent. So you have to check the intent of your heart. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. important. And even like, you know how some women are like, um, he has to be a certain height. To me, this is right. my own personal thing. That's getting a little bit, you know, because nobody can control that. You can't mm-hmm. control your height. Now, you can control your character and your integrity. That's something, you know what I mean? That For me, that's right. important. What is your character like? What is your integrity like? But you can't control your height. I can't control the size of my breast. He can't control yeah. the size of his penis. Like, let's be real. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. some things, yeah. you know, we get a little bit like, okay, really? Mm-hmm. So be careful with that that fine line. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with you because you see nowadays where guys are now, they're feeling this pressure to be this type of successful person and not because, you know, it's from the overflow of their heart and what they're passionate about and to be able to help their family, but they feel that's the only way they're going to be able to get the woman and they feel inferior or they've even had situations where a woman would leave them for a guy who was wealthier or more famous. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, yes, of course, like you said, you want someone who's going to be a provider, but it's your your definition of provision is not the same as what other people's provision would be. You know what I mean? It's like from, like I said, a more shallow place as opposed to saying, what are we building here as a family? How can I also support him, you know, with my love, with my encouragement, with my respect towards him, my honor towards him, as opposed to being like, you know, well, if he's not making this kind of money right now and he's not, you know, blah, 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 and this, and it's like, there's not, I want guys to know who are listening to you. There's nothing wrong with you working a nine to five. There's nothing wrong if at the present isn't. moment you're struggling financially or you're making minimum wage. Everybody had to start somewhere, you know, and it's like, it's about yeah. who you are today and where you're headed. And so if you, and for guys listening, if you happen to be interested in a woman or you've been in a relationship and she just pressures you financially just to buy her things or make you not feel like you're not good enough or not doing enough, then that might not be the right woman for you either because you don't need to be, you know, stressed and making money from that place. Obviously, like you said, yes, you want the man to be the provider, but but not from that place of stress and not from that place of feeling like he's not good enough for the love if he doesn't make this kind of money yet. Like I said, everybody has to start somewhere. <laughs> and so if, he is, if, if he's That's trying good. and he's passionate, you know what I mean, and, and he's given his all every single day, that is more important than a guy who can buy you everything, but he treats you like crap. <laughs> yeah. So and to the men about too, it. also yes, that's that's amazing. That's beautiful to the men too. Like also, when you like a like a, it, it, to me, it always goes back to the intent of the heart. If you are, mm-hmm. if you know that you you know you are um, maybe not where you want to be financially, but you've met a great woman, not somebody that's trying to use you. And like Shade said, like you know you're stressed out trying to take care of her, and it's like, what is she giving me in return? Like, is she building me up? She helping me build my mm-hmm. dream. There's a big difference. But, you know, if you, I don't want, guys, don't be afraid to um, approach a woman that may seem like, because a lot of times guys, mm-hmm. like, if they see a woman who's well put together, she drives a really nice car, whatever, they may not try to talk to her. But if she's a great woman 
and she mm-hmm. sees that you are working towards your goals and your dreams. Mm-hmm. Like you could be working a nine to five, right? And you could say, but my goal is to become, to own this company one day, right? A great mm-hmm. woman will latch onto your vision and help yep. you achieve that. Like, do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like my husband, he, like he, he's an entrepreneur. So I speak yeah. life into him. Like, you know, we, I, when he's mm-hmm. showing me things that he's doing, I'm like, this is how, you know, what about this? Like, think about this. I'm helping him grow his vision and his business by being supportive, by speaking mm. life. You know what I'm saying? So, so I think, you know, man, you'll know if a woman is for you if she speaks life about your vision, even if you're not where you mm. want to be. But, it, you know, she can mm. tell when you are – a woman can tell when a man is a provider. Not, I'm saying, mm-hmm. like Shade said, it's not even about you having a million dollars yet. She can tell mm-hmm. when that's your mindset, though, when you're like the type of man mm-hmm. where you're like, you know what? I'm a man. I want to provide for you. And you and you are working mm-hmm. towards those goals and those dreams. She will latch on to that vision and help you, mm-hmm. you know, speak life into you and help you whichever way she can. So don't get discouraged, mm-hmm. brothers. There are some queens out here who are like, when you're with me, oh, you will be a millionaire because we're going to work together and become that. Like, you know, there are some women mm-hmm. out there that are like that. You don't have to have already arrived. Mm, that's good. And so why do you think it's dangerous to treat boyfriends like husbands? And also share what that term means. <laughs> okay. I, just, I posted a, a a video on that on my Jael the Great Facebook page. And, oh, my God, mm-hmm. I have, like, almost 80,000 views on that and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments. Um, <laughs> so I I posted that because, of course, with my life coaching, most of the time, women and men, but, you know, women are more talkative and more verbal than men. So usually it's the women that are doing all the talking. But they're always mm. like, you know, what am I doing wrong? Like, oh, my God, my heart is broken again. Oh, my God, I slept with him, I did this, and he didn't stay with me. You know, and mm. I'm like, okay, darling, first of all, oh, okay, Jesus, ladies, when you meet a guy, you don't know him. You're getting to know him. So you really, you don't know him. I don't, you may have gone on three dates, but you don't know him. So why are you committed to and so emotionally attached to a man that you just met? Women start, so, so women will start, will meet a man that they really like, you know, because he may be consistent the first three weeks. Which is that's not showing you anything because I can anybody can be consistent for three weeks, but we mm-hmm. get attached to a man. We start only dating him. We start treating him like he's our husband. We start cooking, mm-hmm. cleaning, sleeping with him, doing all these things, thinking that's going to keep him. And by the time we get to a certain point, we've done that with ten, fifteen different men. So this mm-hmm. is the thing, you know. The, the Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor with the Lord. So your job, you don't have to prove yourself to a man. You don't have to, you don't have to show him that you're a wife. You being authentically who you are, he'll see that. It, 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 you know, if he comes to your, your house or your apartment and it's clean and it's, it's, he knows, the, he can tell what type of woman you are. You know, you don't have to do, jump through hoops and do all these certain things for a man to see that you're a wife. A, mm-hmm. a, 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 a great man, a man who's led by the Holy Spirit can see that in you. So you don't have to do mm-hmm. anything extra, but be authentically who you are. If you're a woman and you have children, you know, if you're at the point and he's able to see you interact with your children, a man can tell mm-hmm. that you're a great mother. You don't have to jump mm-hmm. through hoops and do all these extra things. So there are levels and stages to dating. When you first meet somebody, you are not in a committed relationship. So stop committing mm-hmm. yourself. Men don't do that. Men don't do that. Men meet women that they like. They may be dating three different women at the same time, trying to see, mm-hmm. like, okay, what is this, you know, what do I like about her? Okay, we, like, mm-hmm. men do that. And we, I don't understand why women don't do that. We meet a person, and we're already planning the wedding. That's dangerous. That's very mm-hmm. dangerous. You have to really get mm-hmm. to know somebody. Now, if there's mm-hmm. a situation where, you know, you are really in tune with God, you are really in tune with the Holy Spirit, and even then we still make mistakes because we're human. But if you are, you know, mm-hmm. if you feel like God has shown you that's the person, that's a mm-hmm. different conversation that, you know, you can have with, your, with, with the person you're dating. But typically, mm-hmm. women, when you are dating a man and he's not your husband, he has not committed to you, 
in a com- really mm. there's no commitment until you said I do just to be real honest what's the commitment mm-hmm. Wh- where's the commitment before that you know what I mean mm. people mm-hmm. break up all the time like you mm-hmm. people break up all the time like everybody on this call that's listening how many relationships have you had how many people have you dated mm-hmm. and, and you've broken up with them so I think we got to like kind of go back to the drawing board and start mm-hmm. relearning how to date and relearning what it mm-hmm. means for somebody to court you so my thing is having sex with him is not going to keep him. Mm-hmm. Doing Treating him like a husband and he's not is not going to keep him. So act according mm-hmm. to the stage that you're in. If you're, if you're only in the boyfriend-girlfriend stage where you're getting to know the person, get to know the person. If, he, mm-hmm. if, if it gets to a point where, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to get serious. I, I, you know, we're talking about getting married. I want to propose to you. I think you're my wife. Then you start acting a different way. So I think people just need to act according to the levels and stages that they are in a relationship, in a friendship, in a courtship. And so, and hearts will stop getting broken so much. And people, you know, mm-hmm. be careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. protect yourself. Definitely. Protect your heart. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You spoke a whole mouthful of truth right there. <laughs> <laughs> and so why should we not compare ourselves and our relationships to other people? You know, for example, we see all the time on social media, hashtag couple goals, hashtag relationship mm. goals, and those kind of things. So why should we not compare mm-hmm. ourselves and our relationships to other people? Yeah, that's dangerous. Compare, compare, comparing in any type of form is extremely dangerous. The only person you need to be in competition with or, or, or value is yourself because you are so different than everybody else you see on social media. Your partner is so different. So you having a relationship goal of uh, two people that you've never met who are only showing you the best of things is unrealistic. Like I'm married. Mm-hmm. Marriage is, um, is challenging, just like anything mm-hmm. else in life that you go for. But nobody mm-hmm. shows you that. Nobody talks about that. I wrote a, sh- a TV show. I've been doing a TV show called After I Do, showing the real of marriage because nobody shows us that. So when you, it's dangerous for you because because it'll make you think that nothing ever goes wrong. It'll make you think like they never argue. It'll make you think like there's never been infidelity. It'll make you think like there's never been any, you know, uh, any challenges, which is unrealistic. Challenges in every relationship. So your relationship goal should be. I know the type of person I desire, you know, I, you know, we, we, we want to be respectful of each other. We want to, to treat each other with kindness and love and with grace. Those should be your relationship goals. You know, being with somebody who you can be yourself with and be authentic with. You guys understanding mm. what love is. Love is patient, it's kind, it's long-suffering, you know. Um, those should be relationship goals. Don't ever compare your life, your hair, your skin complexion, your height, your career, or anything to anyone else's because God has his own perfect time and place for every part of our life, and it's different. My journey Mm -hmm. to A-list actress is different from somebody else's. So why would Mm -hmm. I compare my journey to becoming an A-list actress to Angela Bassett? It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. We have different paths that we take. You know, why would I compare Mm -hmm. my marriage to someone else's? It's different. And it's Mm -hmm. a beauty Mm -hmm. in being different. So your relationship goal, again, should be are we kind to one another? Are we loving? Do we know how to handle disagreements, which are inevitable? Do we know how mm-hmm. to handle, you know, family members and mother-in-laws and father in You know, how do we handle confusion or, or, con- or conflict? How do we handle mm-hmm. those things? So you two work those things out within yourselves and don't try to be like anybody else. Now, Sade, it's nothing wrong with you, you know, seeing some good attributes and saying, okay, they have great communication. You know, I, mm. that, that's, that's something that I want to have. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Or they have mm-hmm. learned how to agree and disagree. Okay, that's something mm-hmm. that I want to learn and incorporate in my relationship. Things like that, mm-hmm. yes, those are good. But just only focusing mm-hmm. on these pictures that you see. And then another thing for women, this is a little bit off subject, but, you know, we, we, mm-hmm. we, we, um, we as women a lot of times, and men too, but we see different, you know, women with different things on social media, men with different things. You don't know how they got that stuff. There are women mm. who go to Dubai and sleep with those, the, the princes and the kings yeah. and come back to America and they have all these things. But, they, but you don't, they're, they're call girls. So mm-hmm. you don't know that all you see is this beautiful girl with this beautiful car, these beautiful mm-hmm. shoes, 
this boutique, but you don't know what she did to get that. Mm. So don't covet what you see on social media because you don't Mm. know what people are doing to get those things. You know, if it's somebody, a real Mm. person that you know, like Shawnee, you know me in real life. So you know my success, every blessing, it comes from my faith in God. You know that. You know, like, okay, what I admire about Jael is, like, she has trust God in her journey. You know what I mean? Right. She's trusting God to open doors for her. She's not sleeping with anybody to get it. I would tell you if I did, you understand, because you got, I'm yeah. real, but I didn't, I've yeah. never done that. You know what I mean? So everything yeah. that I've acquired, and, and this is just the beginning, I haven't even scratched the surface, but I have genuinely treated people the way they want to be treated. I'm not perfect. Of course, nobody is, so we don't even have to say that. Mm-hmm. But, but, but mm-hmm. my intent has always been to do what I was, to do what I'm supposed to do and get it by faith. Mm-hmm. So there are women mm-hmm. out there that are bad girls. You know what I'm saying? These are dope chicks that are like mm-hmm. doing it the right way. That's who you imitate. That's mm-hmm. who you say, mm-hmm. okay, how, you know, let me get it like how she got it by faith and by belief and by work, working her butt off. Mm-hmm. So don't mm-hmm. covet relationship or covet. You don't know what people are doing, honey. Yeah. You don't know what's going on and behind closed doors. <laughs> exactly. And there's one of my favorite quotes where it says, basically, we compare our low moments to other people's highlights. And so, like, they're highlight reel. So we're sitting there looking at that person, that good moment. And like you already <laughs> said, we don't know what is behind the scenes. We don't know how they got that. But we're comparing, and then we just look at our whole life and be like, oh, my God, yes. this is so horrible. And it's like you don't know. And sometimes people that have, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes the people that have the healthiest relationships don't even be posting about their relationships, especially in the public eye. Because, you know, nowadays so people true. can be you so nosy. I don't nosy. post anything about mine. No. I don't post. No, because people can be so nosy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I agree with that. And so you um, you talk about one of my favorite topics, and you were leading into my next question. You know, let's talk about identity and why it's important to not give your power away to people who are not ready or who they don't even know who they are yet. Yeah, that's so important, man. Listen, nobody can hurt you unless you give them permission to. Nobody can mm-hmm. damage you unless you give them permission to. Nobody can break you unless you give them permission to. And I refuse to let somebody who was broken break me. I refuse. I refuse to let mm-hmm. somebody who is, who, who is at a place in their life where, um, you know, again, they're broken or they're, or they're damaged to damage me. Like, don't mm-hmm. you, I, I, I will not allow that. I'm not mm-hmm. going to do that. And I made a decision to not do that. You understand? I made mm-hmm. a decision mm-hmm. not to take things personally from people because, like, that's one of the four agreements. Don't take anything mm. personally. You don't know what people are going through. So if somebody is mm-hmm. nasty and mean and rude to you, it has nothing to do with you. That's their own stuff. So why are you taking mm. their stuff and making it your stuff? You know, you know mm. that's dangerous. Don't, let, mm-hmm. don't take other people's stuff and make it your stuff. Mm. You be mm-hmm. kind and you be liked and you be loved. Like this, I was on, <laughs> my friend mm-hmm. posted something on Facebook and I responded to it, right? And this girl was like, um, that's BS, Jaya. First of all, she doesn't even know me, you know. She was like, oh, that's BS, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. She said all this stuff. You know what I said to her, Shane? I said, mm-hmm. you ob- obviously were not loved as a child. And I said, mm-hmm. not so sorry for you. So, you know, like, obviously you're not loved. You don't know, because <laughs> if you did, mm-hmm. I, I said, first of all, don't use profanity because I would not address you using profanity. I said, you mm-hmm. just me. So oh, I'm not going to let you get away with it, but I'm also not going to, like, own your stuff. But I let people know, you know, loving and kind right. people are not mean. You're mean. And loving and mm-hmm. kind people are not mean. So I pray you find love because loving people are not like that. She didn't know what to say. Like, you know, I said mm-hmm. it in a nice way. Like, you know, yeah. loving people are not mean and rude. So stop. It's ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, don't mm-hmm. take on people's stuff. Please don't. And identity, mm-hmm. knowing who you are, is very important. Mm-hmm. Because when you know who you are, and what you, what you, you are a child of God, you are a creator, you were created mm-hmm. to be loving, you were created to give love, to receive love. When you understand your identity, how strong you are, how powerful you are, you know, everything you possess, you won't allow mm-hmm. crap in your life. You're like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You, you're the king's daughter. You're the king's son. Therefore, you are mm-hmm. royalty. You won't put up with just mm-hmm. anything. You won't accept mm-hmm. any man or any job or any career or any type of behavior towards you because you understand my identity is I am royalty. I am God's daughter. I am mm-hmm. God's son. I am a king. I am a queen. And I will only receive 
as such, I will only be treated as such, and I will only treat people as such. It makes mm-hmm. a big difference. When you don't mm-hmm. know that, you take anything, you receive anything, you, you know, you act any type of way, you're mean, you're malicious, you're, you're, you're jealous, because you don't know who mm-hmm. you are. So mm-hmm. figure that out, and figure that out quickly, <laughs> so you can mm-hmm. be loved and be light and be soft. Yeah, I'm a firm believer um, in the power, you know, the power of knowing our identity and our value and worth. I feel that a lot of the issues and things we see in our world today and throughout time have not been morality issues. They have been identity issues, and they have been um, oftentimes yeah. communication issues, which comes from identity as well. You know, and so people really learning yeah. to discover who they are and and how loved and valued they are. And like you said, that will come from the overflow of their heart. And so let's talk to the girl. Let's talk to the girl who's been single for so long and she's feeling hopeless. I'll let you talk. You start. Oh, that's good. I I, I was actually having lunch with a young lady the other day. She was like, I haven't been in a relationship in five years. And I was like, girl, Mm. God is keeping you from some mess, honey. You know, be thankful. (laughs) I know. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Amen. You can run across the wrong one. I think, ladies, those of you who are um, who have been in that situation where you're single and you may see all of your girlfriends dating all these different people, you got to understand. Like, we're all of us are are very different. All of us have a different tolerance level. You know, some of us are stronger in areas and others are weaker, and vice versa. So, what you have to understand is. You know, you may be the type of woman where God has to kind of protect you and keep you um, covered because, you know, you may run across a certain man that if I run across, um, I can handle him, but you can't. It might destroy you. You understand what I'm saying? So, so you, have to, you have to be thankful um, when, when God is covering you. Because you may not be strong enough to handle all this different energy that comes with dealing from dealing with different men. You know, does that make sense? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. some women are, mm-hmm. are, are some women are stronger, Shade. Some women are, you know, they're like, no, you know, mm-hmm. you may come at me a certain way, but you would never do. Like every woman is different. Like, like my, like I'm very, I'm a, I'm very strong, right? I'm a strong mm-hmm. woman. Mm-hmm. So. If, if, if I'm if if I meet a man and he's like too abusing women, you're mm-hmm. not going to abuse me. You understand what I'm saying? That's right. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're 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 not you're not going to disrespect me. So mm-hmm. he may I, I may can handle. He may try to do something, but I may can handle it. Where if another mm-hmm. if another woman meets that person, he's going to abuse her and wreck her world. So God is like, mm-hmm. no, sweetie, you know, and it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean that I'm better than you or you're. What it, it's not anything right. not about that. We're just different. So okay. he's well, you're better than that situation. Keeping, <laughs> right? You know, you know what I mean. But I don't want a woman who, because yeah. what I'm saying is like a woman who may not be as strong as I am, as far as you know, right, I she may saying. meet a guy and he can manipulate her. You know, you know, I'm, right. I'm not, I'm not better than her, but we're different. We're built different. Right. It's perfectly okay. So I just want right. her that. God is protecting you, darling, and He's keeping you. And you mm. and you appreciate that. Learn how to hang out yeah. with girlfriends. Learn how to learn how to just be friends with guys. You understand? It's not always about you know mm-hmm. being in a relationship. You know, learn how to be friends with people. Go. You can hang out and do group dates. You can hang out and and um you know just enjoy the company of somebody until you meet somebody and God is like, darling, this is Him. Mm-hmm. So don't feel like oh mm-hmm. nobody loves me. I'm not attractive. You are, but yeah. God is protecting you, and it's okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like it's singleness. Okay. I feel like singleness is a gift. You know what I mean? It's just as much as a gift as people being married. You know, and and I'm super thankful yes. because I feel like a lot of times, you know, um, people don't realize like you get to discover more about who you are. You get to do more of your passions, follow more of your dreams and aspirations. And I'm not saying that people can't do that when they get married, as you and I both know. There's not everyone like how you and your husband are where you both support each other in your dreams and you're moving forward. There's some people where they, you know, hopefully they don't have to be in this kind of relationship, but they don't just start discovering who they are until even after they've gotten married and had kids. You know what I mean? It's like, and that's fine because obviously we can discover at any age, but it's like use this time now that you're single to be able to just enjoy your life and enjoy who you are you know, and to live yeah. your dreams and your passions and, you know, and, um, and, and travel, just be happy with enjoy you. your life. Yeah. 
Yes. Like, yeah. like travel, go see things, do fall in love with yourself, date yourself. Like that's important when mm-hmm. you when you fall in love with yourself and you treat yourself. The what you what you need to do in your single uh, season is treat yourself the way you want somebody to treat you. You will attract that. Like that's mm-hmm. very important. Mm-hmm. Like I think because you know I've been single and married, so I know I know both both sides yeah. of it. Um, you know, be okay with that because, like you just said, Shade. Because even when you get married, you're still learning yourself. Now you're that's learning true. yourself. He's learning himself. Y'all both. So that's a whole other thing. You understand? Like, that's a lot. Yeah. So enjoy yeah. this season. Enjoy mm-hmm. every season in life. Every, you know, there's a season mm-hmm. and there's a time for everything. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Just, enjoy feel, it. Don't shun it. Exactly. And I just feel um, on my heart to share this with someone who's listening you know, there's nothing wrong with you for being single. You don't have to feel less than or incompetent or, or like, Please you know, don't. there's something the matter with you. You know, you, as um, Jael always says, you were created perfectly for your purpose and who yeah. you are is such a gift and such a blessing to this world. And you don't have to feel like you're less than. You know, a lot of times when we're single, and I've seen this especially even a lot growing up in church, people make you feel like you're single because you're waiting on someone as opposed to, I always tell people I'm single because I'm single. It's like I can just be satisfied in who I am and be yes. joyful in this in this part of my life. I don't have to be just waiting and longing because then what happens is we're telling women that in, in the back of their minds, the only reason why you're single is because you're waiting for someone so they can never actually be fully content and satisfied in that part of their life. And so I just want to encourage you that nothing is the matter with you, that you don't have to feel less no. than. As we've been talking about, don't compare your life to what everyone else is doing. Please you know, It don't. doesn't matter what age that you are, that it happens. All that matters is that it's going to happen in your life wherever God is leading you. And so we just want to encourage yeah. you in that. Don't allow anything or anyone to make you feel less than, you know, because who you are is good and good enough. Yes. And, and then it's mm-hmm. another thing, like, uh, my girlfriends are. We're gonna like have a whole topic about, you know, a lot of a lot of people covet marriage, like mm-hmm. like a lot of people covet it. They don't have no idea what it is. They have no mm-hmm. idea what what the, the true purpose of it. I'm still learning. So mm-hmm. I think that's another thing women do wrong is they covet it. Like mm-hmm. you wait wait on that until it's time, because mm-hmm. that is a ministry. That is that that like like. That, like that's an anointing too. You got to be anointed to be married. I feel like that's a that's yeah. a whole other. You know what I'm saying? Part. So yeah, a lot it's of women covered it, and it's like it's yeah, like chill out, just chill, okay? <laughs> because you got to yeah. get a deal with that when it's time for that. It's not, you know, it's beautiful. Of course, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. But it's mm. just like anything else in life. It's it's um. You 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 really need to, to get you together. I say that you you really need to get, yeah. get you have get you together. You know what I mean? And not yeah. to say that you you're gonna be perfect. No, we know that you're gonna still be a, a work in progress even when you get that. But enjoy being single. There's a season just like it's just like there's a season for 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 being a mother and for not being a mother like right, right now. Because you don't have mm-hmm. children, right? No. This right. So this is the season for you not to be a mom. So you enjoy right. the season. Of being mm-hmm. just you, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> and then when it's time yeah. for you, I'm for real, girl. Then when it's time for you to be a mm-hmm. mom, you know what I mean? God will grace you to deal with that because that's different. Mm. Like you can't just mm-hmm. do whatever you want. You understand? So enjoy every stage and season mm-hmm. in life and let it come authentically when it's time to. Don't rush it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't rush mm-hmm. it. This, yeah. This is so good. So we have a couple last things we want to discuss in this portion. And so um, okay. how do you feel about online dating, and what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages? I'll let you start first. I, I've never done that. I've never done that. Mm-hmm. But I think I don't think there's absolutely anything wrong with it because you can meet mm-hmm. a guy at Target. And he's crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, because people say, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, you, you, I mean right. okay. I mean, we've met plenty right. of people, honey, just in church, yeah. regular places. I've met dudes in church who were off the t- mm-hmm. a hot mess. <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've dated pastors who were a hot yeah. mess. So it's not <laughs> even about <laughs> where you meet the person. I think even, I think even, I think in all things, we're in supplication, like, not to be all super mm-hmm. deep, but I think even you know, even if you're when you're dating online, say, okay, God, listen, 
guide me to the right person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for real. Like yeah. even when you when you're you know, even when you're out, like, okay, God, I will always say, God, I thank you for meeting the me I thank you that I meet the right people who are connected to my yeah. destiny and my purpose. I don't even want to meet anybody who's not like you can say that. You can say so so yeah. God, I'm getting ready to go on this e harmony, Lord. And you know, yeah. Uh, you know, guide me to the people that are for me, even if it's just a friendship. Because you may need a guy mm-hmm. who's a really good friend that can help you with your business. You don't know, but I think right. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just think you should use wisdom in 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 um all dating capacities. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I agree with use, that, and I feel like you just trust have, your gut. Right, yeah, and and do what you feel is best for you. Because for some people, you know, it may not. They may say, okay, well, this is not what I'm looking for. You know, as we know, yes. a lot of people nowadays meet each other through social media, especially. You know what I mean? And so, I would just want to encourage you to, you know, um, you know, take your time and just make sure that someone yes. is who they say that they are. You know, and and yes. when they show you who they are, make sure you believe them. So oh, don't just uh, brush those little it. signs to the side, like. Always pay attention to the signs. Not obviously, don't be paranoid. But if you see certain yield signs or things that are telling you to slow down, then listen to that. Yes. And like um, Giles was saying, follow your gut. Yes, please do. All right. And so for our final question and our final topic, why should we let the man pursue us as women? And, and then I guess on the other end, why is to the guy? Why is it important for him to pursue the woman? Oh, that's a beautiful question because it's nature. It's natural. Mm-hmm. So let things happen organically. The man was created, and that's a beautiful thing, to find mm-hmm. her. Like, that's dope. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. the man was created to to find his wife because that's his. Yeah. That become, You become one with her. You know what I mean? That's your wife. That's your family. You're creating another generation, mm-hmm. another legacy. So I um, mm-hmm. think it's important, ladies. And there's nothing wrong with you showing interest. You know what I mean? Because yeah. sometimes, man, you know, yeah. it's nothing wrong with you showing interest. You may say, oh, my God, you look so nice. Like, you may see a guy that's attractive. You may say to him, you, right. look, you, you look really handsome. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? But let him right. let him take it. If he wants to um, take it further and take it to another level, then let him do that. Um, and men, mm-hmm. you know, that's a joyful thing. And y'all like to hunt anyway. Like, that's just how y'all would create it. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, be the hunter. Like, it's okay. Like, yeah. don't, you know, don't allow society to de- to demasculate you. Because I think society is really trying to do that to our men. It, it's sad. Oh, my goodness. It's really yes, trying to it is. It's demasculate yeah. men. Yeah. And make it yeah, I'm yeah, really, like, no. Yeah, I'm really changing up the yeah. roles and everything. And it's, it's really and like, yes. The roles. Yeah, and men and women are equal, but they're different, and we have to just understand yes, that because different. they are different. We're equal, but we're yes. different, and it's okay for a man to be yes. a man and to be powerful and strong, and he also is compassionate yes. and loving. But don't, like you said, try to emasculate him. Like, uh, I'm tired of that. <laughs> I'm so tired I'm of that. So and it's okay it. for a woman to be submissive, like women. Yeah. Submissive does not mean he runs over you and a king knows that like we, we know, like you said, yeah. we're equal, but different. A, a, a king knows that he's not trying to like go cook my food, but that's not what, that's right. not what submitting means. But as a woman, right. when you have a man, this is the thing. When, when you, when it's in order and you're doing it God's way to the best of your ability, it's going to flow naturally. You would naturally submit to him because you trust, you would naturally yeah. submit to and, and, and trust his plan for you, for you all's life. You know, you, you know what I mean? But yeah. a woman is not going to submit to a clown. Now let's just be honest about right. that now. Yeah. Cause you, you should be dating a clown anyway. Like, why yeah. are you dating yeah. a clown? You know, don't do that anyway yeah. for those men who don't understand who they are yet. And they will, but maybe at this yeah. point when you met him, he's like on that clown stage. Of course you're not yeah. going to submit to that. Like, right. no, right. but when you meet yeah. a king, girl, you're going to love to submit yeah. to him. Let him be the man. Let yeah. him be the man. Yeah. yeah. So you exactly. be the lady. You be the woman. You be dainty. You be soft and strong. But you be, you be yeah. the lady. You be the yeah. queen. But you said something very powerful, too. When the person treats you and honors you and he, and he really values you and loves you in that way, and I believe that the guy is able to lead that in the relationship, the woman, like you said, will easily be like, yes, of course, <laughs> sure, yeah. I trust you, because he's made her feel Absolutely. confident and secure. He's lifted her up. Like, you can tell that you're being loved great. You can tell that your husband is, you know, good to you. And I see it in so many other relationships, like with my castmates and other dear friends of mine. You can tell that they are being 
loved and um and cherished, you know, um by their husbands and vice versa. And so because of that the woman is respects him in such a great way and she honors him. You know what I mean? And so exactly. I think it's really important, like you said, you can let someone know that you find them attractive or or you like these qualities in them. Right. But if you allow if you allow the man to pursue you and allow him to lead him the way, you. then yeah, then it helps I think in the long run because most of the time now women will be like, Well he can't make a decision and he can't do this and I'm like, Well you never trusted him and empowered him to be able to lead the relationship exactly. because you just decided you were going to take over. <laughs> so, yes, and honey, this, trust me, men know what they want. If they want it, they go for it, trust me. Exactly. I agree with that. And so this has been such yeah. an amazing, wonderful conversation. As always, I'm super inspired and empowered by you. I'm thankful we were able to take a lot of topics that are always Thank sent you. into both of us and that matter so much. And um. I just want to ask you if you have any final words as we wrap up our time together. Oh, I just want to tell everybody to remember how amazing and precious you all are and be gracious with yourselves. Forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. Pursue your dreams and your passions relentlessly. Don't let anybody talk you out of being great. Don't dim your light for anybody. Confident and fearless because you are God's daughter and God's son. So you have a right mm-hmm. to be bold. You have a right to be confident. You have a right to be strong. You have a right to mm-hmm. be in love with yourself. It's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with that. So, you know, just, just, just know the beauty in, in your individuality. You know, if you don't know your purpose, you know, seek God for it and uh, live your life to the best of your ability and be happy and be free. Don't covet relationships. Don't covet marriages. Don't covet social media pages and stuff. Don't do that. Be authentically mm-hmm. who you are because you are more than enough. You're more than enough, and I love you all. So follow me on social media. <laughs> yeah, and so thanks so much to my gorgeous friend, Dr. Jael the Great. Our next song of the night is one of my favorites, David Banner featuring Rudy Currents with Marry Me. Make sure you go and get the God Box album right now on iTunes and wherever else music is sold. You're listening to episode 43 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Do you know of a young adult who has a passion for playing sports and who is determined to reach their full potential as an athlete? Hi, my name is Michelle Morgan, and I'm a transformational sports coach, speaker, author, and founder of Vida Es Oro. I earned a college basketball scholarship, and my purpose is to empower young athletes to reach their full potential in sports and in life. I wrote the book, How Youth Triumphant Sports, Tools That Create a Triumphant Life for Young Athletes to know the valuable tools that makes players great, but most importantly, all those tools that they're learning to carry over to create a triumphant life. My book is available on Amazon.com, or you can also go to my website at VidaEsOro.com. That's www.VidaEsOro.com. I-D-A-E-S-O-R-O.com. You may also reach me at YouthSports at VidaEsOro.com to find out more information with working with young athletes. It's Michelle Morgan from the Mind Ride Game Tight segment, and keep listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Welcome back to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Our next segment of the night is a brand new one from one of our brand new castmates for Season 3, Mind Right, Game Tight with Michelle Morgan. Join published author, speaker, and transformational sports coach Michelle Morgan as she shares inspirational stories of athletes who use the power of their mind to take their game to the next level in sports and in life. Hashtag Mind Right Game Tight to ask her your questions and join in the conversation. Hi, this is Michelle Morgan with the Mind Right Game Tight segment on the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Today's guest is Mona Allison. Mona started playing team sports at the age of 10. She played college basketball from 2000 to 2004 for Los Angeles Valley College in California and St. Andrews in North Carolina. After college, Mana felt there was a void, and in 2011, Mana was introduced to flag football and played on two co-ed teams. This ultimately led to her playing tackle football for the California Quake for two years. She played for the Swedish national football team at the Women's World Championship in Finland in 2013. In 2014, Mana joined the Carolina Phoenix, where she was playing in her third. Where now she's playing in her third season 
as a wide receiver and defensive back. Mana has been an all-star selection each year, two years as a West All-Star, and two years as an East All-Star. Mana is also the co-owner of Breaking Boundaries Apparel, an apparel line focused on highlighting women in sports across the world. The brand celebrates, encourages, and empowers all women in sports that are or will be break, breaking boundaries. So welcome to the show, Mona. It's nice to have you on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So I wanted to get into um, the breaking boundaries of peril because just by knowing a little bit of background about it, I feel like it's a very powerful message and mission behind it. So can you tell us a little bit about how Breaking Boundaries Apparel was created. Um, so when I was um, got the opportunity to play for the national, the Swedish national team as a, a, a female athlete that plays football, unfortunately we don't have the same perks as the men do, so we don't. We have to actually fund um, our own seasons. We have to find our own way to play even for the national team. So instead of trying to fundraise um, and ask people to actually donate money, since I'm a graphic mm-hmm. designer, I decided to come up with, uh, with a T-shirt design, and um, and I decided to sell it online to try to raise money for me to be able to play with the national team. And I got a lot of great feedback. Um, a lot of people bought the shirts, and people were kind of asking me for more designs. And so I, it was pretty much a fundraising idea that kind of turned into a business um, because there weren't a lot of – well, actually, there weren't any apparel lines out there for women – that played um, football. So Mm. it kind of was a cool opportunity and a a lot of people, you know, were looking for something that really spoke to them. And so that's kind of how the whole idea got started. Um, And I've always been involved in trying to highlight women in sports and putting them or giving them a platform. So it kind of just worked out. So with breaking boundaries, like can you describe a time where you had to break some of your own boundaries to get to where you are today? Let's see. Well, I think we always, well, especially with women's football, we're constantly having to break boundaries because constantly faced with all the, you know, a lot of adversity and a lot of uh, struggles that men aren't faced with. Just when it comes to getting the opportunities to be seen, to be noticed, uh, we kind of have to go above and beyond. Um, We don't get paid. And a lot of people that uh, know about women's football recognize the lingerie league and kind of assume that that's what we play, which we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, we play with full pads. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where we're always kind of struggling to kind of be recognized for what we do. A lot of times it's just going out there and educating people about, well, you know, women, well, female football players actually do and that we don't have to kind of take our clothes off in order to get recognized. So um, one way of doing that was, you know, I guess starting the brand, that was kind of my way of breaking those boundaries and allowing for people to see that, you know, women can do the same thing men do with the exact same equipment. Right. And do you feel like breaking boundaries not only resonates with, like, in sports but with outside of sports as well? Absolutely. And that's that was another part of the brand that we kind of wanted to really focus on. You know, it's not just breaking boundaries in sports, but just in life in general. A lot of times society tries to put us in this box or to tell us what we can and can't do, what we should or shouldn't do. Um, mm-hmm. So it also speaks to, you know, going for your dreams and, and, and really stepping us out of that box that, that they try to put you in, uh, reaching for higher levels. So definitely. And do you feel like you've ever, ever been put in a box, if not just in sports, but in life, where you can describe an example where you might have felt like you were in a box because of, you know, who you were and how you broke through that that boundary as well? I think so. I mean, I... um especially when it just in my general life when when I'm out and about um and I start talking to sports that I, I always tell people don't judge a book by its cover because a lot of people you know they look at me and they kind of laugh at me when I tell them I play women's football I'm not the biggest person they've seen um <laughs> and I don't necessarily fit the your stereotypical you know idea of a football player so a lot <laughs> so a lot of times you know I, I kind of get that, and and I um, it's pretty funny. But I show my phone, and I pull up a YouTube clip, <laughs> and I kind of just you know show them what what it's really about. So a lot of times I do get put in that box where you know I get the comments like, oh, so you're the cheerleader, or you know, do you play 
uh, in the lingerie league or um, I get that all the time. And so um, I feel like I'm constantly kind of put, putting that category when people just meet me. But it also gives me the opportunity to really educate people and, and show them that, no, we have women of all ages, of all sizes, from different backgrounds that are, are doing this because of their passion for the game. What kind of mindset do you have to create or did you have to create and also instill in yourself to to believe in yourself knowing that you can break through those boundaries, that you're not the cheerleader, that, you know, there is no stereotype to be whoever it is that you want to be regardless if it's in sports, you know, or in life because right. even as athletes, you know, it's like, oh, you look like this so you have to play this sport. Or, mm-hmm. you know, you're this tall or this short, then, you know, you'll be better in this sport. So how did you create a mindset to keep you strong um, to build that mental toughness about yourself to keep pushing forward? Because a lot of the times if we're told we're not something or we don't meet society standards, then, you know, there can be times right. where we start to doubt ourselves. So how do you keep yourself motivated mentally? For me, I think my passion keeps me motivated. I absolutely love this sport, and I 100% want to be a role model for younger girls. That We have a girl, actually, that she comes to all our games, and, mm-hmm. and she's eight years old now. And so seeing the look in her eyes when she sees us play, that gets me motivated. The passion I have for the sport, knowing that I truly believe that nothing is going to stand in my way. Um, absolutely nothing. And the people that, that, you know, are the doubters and, uh, you know, want to put you down or tell you you can't do something, to me, that makes me want it even more. So for me, I just, I use all the negativity as fuel to to reach even higher and go even further and take the extra step. So I, I think for me, that's, that's just what it did is that passion. It's like, you're not going to stop me. I don't care what anybody says, you know, this is what I really want to do. And I think I can be you know, really successful at it, or I, I really want to, you know, do what I need to do in order to help advance the game. So I just think you really have to truly believe in yourself um, and don't let go of that dream. Don't let anybody tell you that you shouldn't do something uh, that you have a, a real passion for. That's right. I, I'm with you 100%. So, Mana, what message do you have for girls and women to continue breaking boundaries in sports and in life? Stay focused, stay committed. Do your work. If you are in school, pay attention in class. Um, stay in your books. Do the extra work in the gym, um, outside of the gym. And if you have a true passion for the sport that you play, don't let anything stop you. But make sure that you um, do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. School, 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 and school. So always make sure that you're, you know, paying attention, getting your education, um, because I always say you're going to spend a lot more time in life than you are in sport. So that always yeah. goes hand in hand. And then what's next for, for you in football and breaking boundaries of peril? So next in football, we just locked in our spot for the playoffs. So we are um, about three weeks away uh, from the second round of playoffs. So uh, hopefully we are on the road to the championship, um, which Mm. I truly believe we are. (laughs) Nice. And as far as breaking boundaries, we actually just renewed our partnership with LA Sparks. Nice. Our second year with them. Congratulations. So thank you. Really exciting. So um, we're focused on on that and and continuing to to put out some great apparel and, and spreading the word and, you know, putting, giving, highlighting women in sports and those that have a passion for it. Awesome. And then I just want to remind everybody out there that um, breaking boundaries is not just, you know, football, like they do all women's sports. So um, basketball, Mm -hmm. volleyball, everything. She has apparel for, you know, all sports. So just so everybody go check it out. And then Mona, if you can give us the website so that we can go check out your outfit, awesome graphics and T-shirts and apparel as well. Absolutely. So the Breaking Boundaries website is the BBA store dot com. It's P H E B B A store dot com. And if you guys are interested in any graphic work, my website is Design Ninja Studios dot com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And then, like I said, Mana is awesome. Definitely go check out the apparel <laughs> on the BBA store. And then if you have your own businesses, you need business cards, logos, um, flyers, whatever it may be, go to the website, 
um, her website as well and check out everything that she's done because she is awesome and amazing and really, really great at what she does. She excels not only in sports but in life as well. So once again, mm-hmm. thank you, Mona, for being on the Mind Right Game Tight segment on the Shadow Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me today. Welcome back to the Shade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Now it's time for my new artist spotlight segment. Before we get into this segment, let's play one of his songs. Here is Try C with Roll Out. This week on New Artist Spotlight, I'm highlighting one of my favorites, inspirational hip-hop artist, professional model, actor, and entrepreneur, Tri-C. Tri-C started writing and rapping at the young age of 15, touring three states and eight cities. He is no rookie to life on the road. Tri-C received awards for top male dancer and lyricist in AMTC's Shine. He has now added modeling to his career, after getting signed to Wilhelmina Modeling Agency. Tricy has also worked with many high-profile celebrities such as Kylie Jenner, Rita Ora, Usher, Ray Shermard, Nick Jonas, and even making an appearance on the Keeping Up with the Kardashians on E! Network. He was recently chosen by Hollister to be one of their main models and is continuing to make hit records as he releases his new single, Big Boat. With a newfound experience within the entertainment industry and his clothing brand, Hooligans, exploding throughout the nation, Tri-C is now playing by his own rules. So I want to share with you guys why I adore him and his music. He's like a little brother to me, and I've been working with him ever since he was about 19 years old, and he actually won my Ventura County's vocal superstar competition a few years ago, and he has been such a joy to be able to work with. He's the first hip-hop artist and vocalist that ever won the competition. Tri-C is also a philanthropist. He loves helping to raise funds and awareness for American Cancer Society's Relay for Life, for Brittany Cares International to help children survive cancer. He's all about helping the Boys and Girls Club and other kids and teens, and he's just a phenomenal person. When he gets on the stage, he lights it up. And he's so unique and creative in how he brings his energy and dynamic presence to the stage. And you can feel his heart for others and his heart for what he does every single time that he performs. He is super passionate. And he's been, like I said, a joy to work with. He gives his 100% every single time, not only on stage but off the stage. And he is consistent and persistent. You know, especially in our generation, a lot of people just want things quick and now, and they're willing to unfortunately compromise their morals and sell their soul in order to get it. I really appreciate the fact that Tri-C's been able to stay true to himself and stay true to his faith and is true to his love for others and making an impact. And even if he ever feels himself wavering in that, he's always able to return to his center. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with him these past few years, and we look forward to doing many more exciting things together in this industry. I truly believe that for Tri-C, there are no limits to what he will be able to not only accomplish, but the people's lives he'll be able to touch and how he's going to grow and accelerate in his identity and Jesus and just knowing how loved he is by God and sharing that with the world. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what's in store for him and what he's going to share with the world and how he's just going to continue to grow in who he is. He is such a positive person. He is influential. He makes a wonderful impact to those around him, and he is one of a kind. And so as we're finishing up this segment, I want to play another one of Tri-C's new singles, Big Boat. Keep listening to the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Thank you to everyone who tuned in tonight to episode 43 of the Sade Champagne Show on Grind Hard Radio. Thank you for downloading, subscribing, and sharing my radio show. Next week, our celebrity guest includes my longtime friend, Jackie's boy, who has sold more than 15 million records and won a Grammy for his production and songwriting. We also have a couple more surprise special guests. Thanks to Grind Hard Radio for the opportunity to create my own radio shows. Thanks to Travis Miller for creating and producing my theme song and to Scott Swish for mixing the song. Thanks to Kata Mafiaso for helping me to create our new radio drop. Thanks to my special guest, Dr. Jayal the Great, and my castmate, Michelle Morgan. Our final song of the night is Dalton Sear with You're Not Alone. I'm Sade Champagne, and thanks for listening to my radio show. I don't ever take your support for granted. We'll see you next Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time right here on Grind Hard Radio. Where dreamers dream, where dreams
dreams come true. There's no limit to what we can do. Turning no's to yes, leaving doubt behind, releasing the stress. We were born to shine.